Timber Saw. Let's go. All right, Dark Seer. Okay, that's very four. Normal, very normal. Pick. Strength heroes. No, no, Dark Seer's intelligence. Oh, that's right. I'm so sorry. Very tanky intelligence. Yes, he is a melee hero though, so he's in your hero pool. That's a, nah. No. Okay. No. Int. If it's int, it's he's just like, out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Has smart. to be strength. It's a smart person. Some yeah. anomalies are like Zeus. Zeus is just a random, you know, off the. I'm a bit concerned about this because they have the Dark Seer's fin combo, but aren't they just setting up for some free farm like Spectre hero here again? That we saw earlier. Yeah, yeah. Spectre is not banned, you? after yeah. all. Oh, what kind of pick it up are we putting down there, buddy? Game. Okay. okay. I can game. Game. I can go in for all right, that's one. enough. Okay. Sorry about that. Still got the mid. Still got the carry. <laughs> Plenty of room to grow for mm -hmm. Eternal Envy 50-50. Yeah. I mean, he, he is... It's a nice PA game, too, He's actually. the Spectre. He is the Spectre player. Spectre or PA. He was yeah. doing... It, true. He, but he was doing the blade mail build. Before. He was doing the hey, hood build. Blade. He he brought that upon everyone. That is a classic Eternal Envy build. You're right. Shameful, but classic. Disgusting. D really very disturbing team. individual. Morphling the tw sub twenty percent win rate. How do we feel about him this game? Well, okay, so I understand that Quincy Brax Crew. has decided to mute his teammate <laughs> during the during the yes, draft. Right. But I feel like if he had it, he said. I'm feeling Morphling right here, guys. Eternal Envy says, "Drop your stick." No, I mean, I haven't played that hero. I've never played that hero. Have you ever seen Eternal Envy play Morphling? Now, hear me out on this, okay? <laughs> here. How about what we do is we get a Rioya Morphling. Eternal Envy is supporting position five, so that way Mu can play the Timber Saw. We're gonna see an Eternal Envy clockwork here. So he's going back to no Tide Hunter role, oh which was God. support. Exactly. No, no. Dude, I alliance. am in. I am super in yeah. for this. Uh, yeah. So you think it's a mid morph? This is a Susie seven four seven, Boeing engine Eric plane, Dawn. morphling pick. Okay. Do not be Eternal Envy morphing, please. Ten seconds. You know what? There have been actually a few games in my career where uh, the game has ended before 10 minutes, <coughs> and uh, I, I recall one of them was uh, Eternal Envy Morphling. Uh, he probably died about seven times in the laning stage. I believe he was level two at five minutes. I do I do actually have, it's coming back to me now. Mm -hmm. I'm recalling this. I actually remember the game. He had like four CS, right? It's something like that, something like <laughs> that. Impressive. Like, what, what tournament was that? I don't know. Five I remember that. Oh, it was ages ago, in the dark that. ages of I Dota. I think I might have been at that tournament. You might have been. Uh, was it a summit tournament? I, I feel like know. it was. I feel like that Dyer was a summit tournament. I don't know. You might have been on the team, dude. No. All right, last band, Void Spirit. Uh, Trying to get rid of any of those mobile mids. Little do they know, of course, that <laughs> Morphling is <laughs> Of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> 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 okay. Puck was taken out as well. Five seconds remaining. And one final oh, band yeah, to go. So... Puck ban, that's probably where the Void Spirit comes from. So again, Quincy Crew will get final, final pick. Yeah, For Fun needs a do shitter, you know. The, the only time we actually saw Morphling win, I believe, was versus a Sven, Radiant which is King worth noting. Pick. They banned Ember. Ember. I think they need a do shitter. I think that's a fairly reasonable ban. Uh, somebody's got to do something. There's no Void. Is there Queen of Pain? That's awkward though. It's no no like d real disable. I think you need some disabling do shitter, but remaining. Puck is gone, Void is gone, Ember's <laughs> gone. Five seconds remaining. Quap is still there. It's r it's really just Invoker's gone too. It's really just Quap. Just make it a Ryaria Morphling and give us a Eternal Envy, something that doesn't still do shit. Still Spectre. Just hit some nudes. Still Spectre's available. That'd be so much farming. That would required. be insanely great. Spectre greedy. Morphling, guys. Great combo. And, uh, I'm not sure if you've seen Timber, it. Timber's and like Timber, a... So. He's a he's a frontliner. You know, he'll stand there. He's mm -hmm. a rock, but he doing do anything other than that. I mean, this is going to be a support Morphling. Support Obviously. Maybe, yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Supportling, yeah. Sure. I mean, that's like a five-second stun. Dying Strength morphed up all the way. Conca! Oh, okay. That's... Yeah, that's... All right. We missed that one. Good Starks here. It's pretty nice. Not a super popular hero, but... With all of the other, with all the spirits and everything banned. Yeah, the Monkey King Storm Band, I think it has a likelihood of having a very strong lane. Ten you know, remaining. this doesn't look like a half bad Necrophos game. Let me Five just tell you. I would actually hmm. be okay with them picking Necro right here. Sight the Morphling, great against the Timbersaw. Pangolier! Hmm. 
What? <coughs> excuse me. What position is this? Pan this is a mid pango. Oh man! This fascination with mid pango. I here. love mid pango. It Gunner never works for me, but it's great. Never wins with it. Why does Quinn? Does Quinn win with it? I don't know. I don't really see him. I mean, Win is in Quinn's name. Yes, so. he does play it. I've seen him play it. He's pretty good at it. I just under. I, I don't. Oh, look at tree. Hero. Look at this. That's crazy. That looking. is crazy looking. Actually. Okay, it's a Brax Timber saw. Disappointed. I am indeed disappointed. Come Pick on, your boy. team, gentlemen. I don't know if I hate Morphling or Pangolier more. I'm gonna go for the Eternal Envy Morphling because if I call it, I'll feel like a genius. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go Quincy Crew. Um, okay, so one for one. Morphine's Mine was a hard for choice. Me. The head choice says Quincy Crew. You can't go both ways, but BSJ. It's for so fun. For either fun. way, whatever he gets, it's going to be wrong. So that's all we need to know at the end of the day. All right, we're going to take a quick break and into game three we go. All right, welcome back, everyone. This is it. This is our final game of the night. We are on game number three. For fun has won a game. Quincy Crew has won a game. This is it. The winner of this goes on to the grand finals. And I think a lot of people right now, they're fairly sure that this is going to be Quincy Crew. But, you know, for fun, the Brackstreet boys, they're making a comeback. Brackstreet's back, Lizard. You know, this could be it. They could force times, Quincy Daddy? Crew down to the lower bracket right now. How many times are going to make that Brackstreet's back pun? Uh, as many times as I want, and you can't stop me. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to try to. Don't worry. You're right. You're not going to stop me. Yeah. Uh, we talked about it, though, during the draft, right? The Quincy Crew has some great combinations. You've got the snap fire. You've got, you know, the fact that you can just unload those kisses using the, uh, the overgrowth to hold everybody in place. And the guys were talking a lot of shade about Eternal Envy playing this Morphling. So. Yeah, they threw a lot of shade at him. Like, I heard some, uh, what did they talk about? Minute 7 GG? It happens. Mm -hmm. It happens. Um, in a game such as this one, there's a, like, uh, there's a lot of weight on his shoulder because he will be playing versus that Sven. And that same Sven should be having an easy game when he rotates into the jungle, finds some farm. Um, meanwhile, Morphling... He'll be contested heavily down bottom. He's playing versus 3 and Darkseer. Now, from level 3, this becomes a bit harder. I mean, the nice thing, right, for Envy is he does have Moo. Moo's going to be able to keep him alive. For mm -hmm. the most part, he's going to be able to go buff him up a little bit. But on the flip side of things, you got Yawar and Sven. And look at this damage coming out already. You've got Brax on the Timber Saw. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little disappointed. I was hoping that maybe we'd see Moo. Play in the timber. Mm -hmm. That is, you know, one of his signature heroes. We actually just talked about it. But uh, you know, Sven does have that built-in cleave. He's gonna be able to recover. He can just go off to the jungle, come back out, and all of a sudden he's ready to go. So yeah, he's mindful. It's 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 kind of very similar. Uh this timber can't do a lot early on in the laning stage because of that clockwork is uh, creep skipping and connecting the wave. It's very similar to Dyer's offlane in which Darkseer and 3 are a bit stronger this early on, but their true power spike is from level 3 on both of these side lanes. Mm -hmm. um, one, I would say, big thing for Timber is that he can be left alone at some point, but then again, Snaking can't really gank Pango that effectively. So. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there's the first blood down in the bottom lane, Moo. Happily picks off the kill on Lelis. Um, Morphling and Wisp are a really strong combo in the laning stage, by the way. I didn't really talk about this, but this is an old school combo that used to be ran on mid quite a lot. And used to, like my teams used to, I used to play Wisp with a couple of different players that would play Morph on mid, and it, it, it's a pretty sick lane. That like a million years ago when you had a team? Yeah, like three, four <laughs> years ago. I'm just being snarky, Lizard. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I've I've accepted my fate at this point. I miss the days of Tiny Io, man. That was my favorite. Get a good Tiny player, yeah. play Io, get the toss back underneath the tower, have a toss, tether slows. Ah, oh, yeah. those are the good old days. Yeah, sadly, Tiny is kind of, like, he doesn't need a Wisp anymore. Wisp, Wisp was there for some relocate plays and 
later on he would give him that overcharge for the attack speed, but Tiny doesn't really truly need that any longer, so that combo isn't as effective. No. No, it's not. Well, let's do a little bit of creep skipping down here, and there's a teleport coming out now from the clockwork, so Snake King looks like wants to try to mess with Lelis as much as he can, doesn't want to allow him to get that, but does have the surge. But he's just gonna run away, and it feels like right now it's just all about making sure Envy can get this farm. And he is getting it, right? 21 CS on top of the CS boards, like, uh, has 10 C 9 CS more than the Sven, so uh, he's doing extremely well down bottom. Mu is giving him a, l a pretty good time down here. Especially having the rotation coming out from uh, Snaking as he manages to go and grab up that bounty rune too that got left behind. Four minute runes are coming up too, so that makes sure that he wants to uh, solidify, make sure that Quinn's not getting his bottle refilled here as this Kunkka does have his own. Yeah, Snaking is trying to go for the top rune, but on top rune, there's two of them. He has to be careful. He's only oh, level the one. The too, they've got the torrent. Looks like he's just. Allowed to walk away, Moo, making sure that Ryoya gets the uh, double damage around here, too. Mm -hmm. So, good they, rotations coming out. They didn't connect the Scatter Blast on Snake King. Maybe if they did, they could attempt to go for a kill, as he's only level 1, but without that, the rotation Dyer's from uh, SVG killed. didn't do anything. Envy's very happy down here. He's got a lot of breathing room, sitting at 28 and 6. CS, so it's it, it's such a funny thing. Like this mid lane, Rioya, he got really low, even with the DD. He's got an Isle that's gonna join in. It's gonna be able to go use a couple of these bottle charges because he teleports. Hmm. Easy peasy. Five minute runes though are coming up, and it looks like Moo's gonna try to go and scout. Needs to be careful though. Can easily die here unless he can read tether over here to Kunko, which he does very easily. Mm -hmm. Radiant structures are fortified. Um, on bottom lane, Lalis was stacking the hard camp and also taking the bounty Radiant's rune, but uh, Snaking is following his steps. You can see this, right? And he's leeching mm -hmm. his experience here, too. And this is very peculiar to see what uh, Snaking decides to do on the map as a position Radiant's four because he can't help Timbersaw and he can't help against Pango mid. So the only thing he, that he can do at the moment is annoy Lalis. He's doing a good job. You can definitely feel that Lelis is not happy that he's being followed around here. He even has that empty bottle, hasn't been able to secure himself more of those runes. Yeah, that, that's, that's really the Radiant's issue with the arcs here. Like, his laning stage is goddamn awful. But the moment you hit level 3, if you hit it uh, fast enough, you can perhaps pressure some lanes. But this offlane just failed for them after that death mid lane. Rolling Thunder coming in hot now as they see Moo and Snake King. Get a couple of these nice bounces over here onto Moo. They get the slow as well. Cookie Hop comes out. There'll be no tethering for you. Drax also joining into the fight here, but not a lot of trees for him to connect to right here. So just going to go right back. Keep on doing what a Timber Saw does best, which Where is his... hang out in the lane. Oh, look at the creeps. That's so sad. Like, they just decided... They just decided to go their own way. Sorry, Brax, like... We're not really that interested. I mean, they're not interested in getting murdered by Brax. I think I can understand that, but... Snake King is uh, now in the Roche Pit with two friends here. Cookie up, X marks the spot, in comes Moose. He's gonna try to help Ryoya out a little bit, get that tether slow off, but they managed to go and take down the clockwork. Ryoya taking a lot of damage here, has the very fire. SVG getting denied by Roshan. This ward will Damn. spot out that Ryoya is just hanging out over here in the castle area. I was, I was actually waiting for that Ross to deny him, but uh, when Pango came in and Treant, I kind of didn't pay attention to that anymore, and he still gets denied. That's just sad. You waste a boat and so much of your time, and you don't get that kill. Sometimes it be like that, Lizard. Mm. Pinging out over here. They really want to make moves on Ryoya, but... You have Brax, you know, just trying to push his advantage here as a Timber Saw does have his level 6 online now, too, with the Chakram. This tower is not going to stay for very long, I have a feeling. So, he's not really the best hero when it comes to pushing, but he can tank quite a bit. Um, however, 
I would assume this tower might stay lo like longer than you would anticipate. There is a Treant. He's maxing out living armor. He has level 2 nature's grasp as well. He should just sit here and spam that. Unless Brax kills him. Mid lane. Yeah. Just trading off a little bit here, Snake King. Oh, Rolling Thunder's gonna get used by Quinn, though. Get a couple bounces back and forth. They healed him up quite a bit, so... Still manages to get taken down by Quinn. I thought for a second that uh, maybe they'd go and try to save him. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. With that javelin, he manages to just dish out enough damage to take down Snake King. Um, they, like you said, they had X marks the spot. They had Ghost Ship. They had Torrent. Maybe they could have turned on him, but it's a difficult kill to make. Otherwise, it's fairly quiet. I mean, they're leaving Envy completely alone down here for the most part. Lola's doing the best he can, but again, he's just a dark seer. Envy doesn't seem too too concerned about this. Yeah, not at Got all. Got a hand of Midas. Yeah. Uh, if you're a Darkseer, I, I don't think you even want to be in this lane. You're there just so at least you're doing something, you're pressuring, you're, you're, you're pushing in and you're farming the hard camp. If you, if you aren't on the lane as Darkseer, Envy is farming the lane and the hard camp and you can't allow that. So at least you're pressuring him a little bit, but uh, you're not happy to be here. You'd rather be farming the hard camp on your own, like in, on, in the triangle and stacking it or something. Seems to be a little bit careful here. Storm Hammer comes out, he gets the kill over on Brax's courier, and Quinn joining in the fight here again. He's a timber slot, it's fairly tanky, but there's just so much damage, especially with the rotation from Quinn. So, man, I just, you know, I talked about this tower, I figured that it would go down pretty quickly considering, but like you said, yeah. that maxing out of the living armor has kept it very healthy. If you look at the... Uh, you would have lost that tower by now. Yeah, if you look at the four fun team, uh, composition. They truly don't have any tower taking capabilities besides uh, Timber Saw just tanking the creeps and Morphling coming online. But that's I, that's coming in like ten minutes. That we it's, ain't there yet. It's on its way, but again, right now you're taking a look over at the net worth, and uh, they're still fairly close. The Sven and of course Morphling. A little bit of a fight over here in the triangle. Go! Trying to go for those runes, of course. Feels mm. like a very slow-paced game compared to what we saw earlier. Yeah, they were trying to contest the um, ancient camp stacked over there. Uh, they didn't manage to because Sven already uh, took quite a decent chunk of it. Snapfire defended. And yeah, the game is slow also because the supports are pretty poor when it comes to experience. Snapfire is only level 4, uh, Clockwork is also only level 4, and because of that you can't really make too many moves across the map. You you also have a Timbersaw and a Tree and all these heroes that naturally just slow the pace of the game. Mm. And I feel like I too should have pinged out Eternal Envy's uh, Midas on the Morphling, but I mentioned yeah. that much earlier, so... Yeah, he's had it since like... He's what, had it for a while. Seven? Yeah, yeah. It's, it was a very early one. I like it. Got it. in front of Rioya. Look at that rolling thunder coming in hot again from Quinn. It's less the Snapfire Kisses. That's a very dead Rioya. Didn't even need any sort of overgrowth. And looks like Quinn's still chasing after Moo here. Should be able to get this kill. Forces out that fairy fire, but he's very, very fast. So double kill now for Quinn. <laughs> and the rest of the team just going to hang back over here. Mm. Quinn is doing a really good job so far on the Pango. He's been all over the map. He's level 10. Second of the network, just behind the Envy's complete free farm morphling. And I, I'm not sure if he can pressure the tower. So both of these teams should just focus on uh, getting kills right now. SVG. Jinx got a yeah, he's absolutely fine. Although the hook shot coming in, that might make things a little bit different. They try to go pull him up over onto the high ground. Quinn jumping forward. Brack just throwing out that timber chain, just wants to cause a little bit of chaos here. MSS, they're not nature's grass. Gonna slow them down just a little bit. Quinn going up into the high ground. Does have to be a little careful the cookie though, coming in hot. Making sure that he can escape. Nice play around those cliffs. MSS does need to be a little bit careful because there is a timber saw. He does like cutting down these trees. And boy, is MSS one big tree over here. Quinn rolling thunders back up again. Snake King's got his dancing shoes on, but he can't help it once you are jumps in and manages to clean him up as Brax now. Forced to probably just timber chain his way out. 
Mm. So this uh, this whole engagement served as a distraction uh, for Envy and Kunka to take down mid tier one, and they did it in like 15 seconds. So um, first objective taken by Radiant, and it's pretty big for them to manage to take these towers because. If they take them in one go, it's easy, but if you try to slowly push multiple times, you can't do that versus Treant. You're never going to take them. Feels like they want to defend this bottom area. They go, they use a scan. See Snake King has the hook shot. Trying to find a clean initiation though, of course, Brax is also here. Now that they don't have to worry about uh, the Treant because he's shown top. Mm-hmm. Uh, so well, why is this happening? You want to have Timberso on the bottom lane defending, you want to switch this, like, carry goes top, oh, yeah. Timber goes bot. Dash forward here coming out from Quinn, just sidestepping. They know there's quite a few people <laughs> down here. Not sure if it looks like they're going to use SVG, kind of bait forward. The, they need to be uh, cautious on the side of Quincy crew, because there is a relocate possibility by Wisp and Morphling. Um, but it looks like... Everyone else from Four Fun is going back anyway, so. Relocate up on the aisle yet. He's only sitting at level five so far. Aww. But you have a bit of initiation right. coming out as Brax is forced away. I don't know why they were really like pooping on uh, Quinn's Tangalier. I've seen him do quite good things with this hero. Maybe they're thinking about their pups. But wait, wait, I've seen uh, Gunner I'm do just... very well on the mid Pango. I've seen Quinn do a decent job on it too. No, Pango is all right on mid lane. It's just a, it's just one of those heroes that um, it doesn't work every single game. And he, if he has one or two counters, it just falls flat. So I can understand why they didn't like it. It's not really a conventional mid laner, and it's not any of the it's not as strong as any of the spirits right now. But uh, it no can spirits work. left in the pool, though, Lizard. Yeah, and come on, get your six on Wisp move. What's happening? Minute uh, 15. A little bit. Snake King, Rolling Thunder coming out from Quinn as he jumps over the cogs. Does manage to go grab up that bounty rune. SVG down on the low ground has scatter blast and a couple hits. Quinn is wicked sick. That was. Uh, he deserves that wicked sick after that kill. Like he jumped over the cogs, like you said, and then he moved straight into the opening. Um, and he also picked up the bounty rune in the in the back. So really well played by him. It, it doesn't look like a big thing, he just killed the position 4 clock, but uh, it wasn't that easy to maneuver the Rolling Thunder that way. Yeah, he made some moves for sure. God Strength thing popped on you are, they're gonna take down the mid tower, and they're gonna try to just take over the Radiant jungle, it seems. And you gotta think about how mobile this Sven is, right? Because eventually, you know, he's gonna have that Ags, but on top of that, he's got the Cookie, he's got the ability to get surged by Lelis. That's a very scary, scary individual. Top lane though, Rioya, Mu, and Eternal Envy. Do they know what's headed their way? They have Mortimer Kisses. They've also got the Overgrowth. This could be disastrous. They'll surge up MSS, the Cookie Hop forward, go and hold them into place, and there it is. There's those Mortimer Kisses, like we talked about. Trying to try to get the kill onto Envy fast enough, but they can't do it. So they only managed to get the Io, and it looks like is gonna be able to just teleport out as well. That's what, a four-man rotation that only ended up with a uh, position 5 kill? You're fine with that, you for fun. You also took down half of that tier 2 on the top lane, which most likely will be healed up by MSS, but... Uh, you're fine, you're splitting the map. Uh, Morphling is still farming. The problem comes when Aghanims gets completed on Sven. I mean, Ryoya also has himself a Heaven's Halberd completed, but... If he's the target, he's not going to be able to even use it in time to do much of anything. Well, right now he will be, right? Because he's tanky enough. He's sitting right. on 2k HP and uh, Yawar doesn't hit that hard. He's only Hook level 13. Shot. Quinn? Quinn's Wicked 6 streak just ended there by Eternal Envy. So Is this Rosh? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Morphling just... Is he getting an item delivered? He... Nah. Yep. It's fine. He's just prepping for that Aegis pickup. Uh, oh, never mind. He's gonna put his Wraith Band in. For a couple of go. extra seconds, and then he's for a couple of it. Well, it you know, out. he just got his, his Manta completed, too. But they're on their way over there. They need to finish this up quicker. 
They're coming in. Lelis getting into position. There it is. The Roche is down. The agents dropped over on the ground, but there's going to be the sword forward here over onto Ryoi. They've got the X marks spot over onto the UR. And again, like we talked about, that Heaven's Halberd coming in handy. He's just a little bit too tanky. Lotus Sword Reward trying to get there fast enough. Chasing down, sees Moo, thinking about trying to go on the jump here. Turning around the Rosie, <laughs> ties right back up to Eternal Envy. They just don't manage to get anything off of that on the side of Quincy Crew. Yeah, they wasted almost all of the God's strength just by trying to chase down Wisp. Uh, after that happens, you need to bail, you need to get out. Uh, pretty well played overall for, from for fun. Again, they they get what they came for and they don't really pay anything for it. Really well well done by them so far. Um, the like fact that Morf mm. Morphling is ahead of Sven, like two two K almost three K. That's huge. Indeed. And they still haven't taken, like, a, a really full-on fight other than that Roche pit. And it felt like most of the time they were just backing off. So. Yeah, because they don't truly really need to fight at the moment as well. Um, but they, they could. You have the Morphling with the Manta, with Aegis right now. He could frontline. I, I still think the Twincy crew are stronger in fights, though. Reload top here. And they'll be able to blow up Lelis. If if there's like a big five on f five fight, the team fight from Quincy Crew just obliterates uh, for fun, at the moment at least. So but they're it's so better strong with the Snapfire, right? The Snapfire kisses. I've seen them just absolutely mm -hmm. do so much damage early on in game, but I feel like they just haven't found the right setup to be able to really use this to its full potential. Mm -hmm, exactly, but they do have the setup, right? So mm -hmm. if you would rather not give them the opportunity to use it because you're playing versus Snapfire with Pango, with Sven, and with Rian. That, that's a lot of control in the front line. Rolling Thunder coming out from Quinn as he blinks forward, finds Moo. They just want to get rid of him as fast as possible. Oh, but he goes off to the side. The Lotus Arm coming in, but it's still not going to be enough. Now Eternal Envy stuck over here on the side, going to try to go for his arm. Doesn't manage to find it. Guar's already popped that God Strength. He's looking for anyone that he can go and catch as Eternal Envy's career does get taken down. Quinn still having vision over here onto Ryoya. We'll be able to slow them down. They're still holding on to that overgrowth as they get there. So Lotus Arm, there it is. This is what I'm talking about, Lizard. That's that beautiful damage coming out from these Mortimer Kisses. Are they going to be able to get the kills though? Ryoya still has his dancing shoes on. They lose Snake King. Ryoya still alive and kicking. They did manage to take down Eternal Envy's Aegis as Quinn finds the kill over onto Ryoya. And there's the jump forward again over onto Envy. The buybacks are coming out in mass. Who trying to get him out just in time. Is he going to be able to do it though? No, he just tethers over to him. And the Quincy crew, they're just relentless. They're chasing after Moo. They need to get a little bit more damage. He's out, managing to just barely save Envy over here. Brax teleporting. Envy, he's got the TP. But he figures that they're not going to hard commit on him at this point. He's waiting for his IO to come back here with Brax. They used all their ultimates in that fight, and because of that, they can't really pursue any longer. But that's it, right? That's what we talked about. This team fight from Quincy Crew, even though they're playing into an Aegis, they don't care. They understand how strong they are, and they just go for it. Uh, they're not that far ahead in net worth, too. This is literally just how the, the lineups work. On one side, you have a really strong team fight. On the other, well, you don't. <laughs> Very uh, astute analysis here. You are now he's gonna get hooked into place by Snaking. Does have that ads though, so he's able to go jump outside of it. Quinn teleporting in over here. He's got the rolling thunder, as his eyes said, over here onto Snaking and Moo. He's gonna be managing to go land on both of them. They're just kind of ignoring Brax over on the back line. MSS, Kiki Hot 4 coming out from SVG. Not gonna be able to quite land it. It's Quinn over on the back line, so we'll be able to take down Moo, and they've got their eyes on Snaking. Might be able to go and get kills on two of these supports, but the people that really matter, I'm not sure they're gonna be able to find that kill. You are having to be holding into place here. Does have that ads. Quinn, blink forward trying to find snaking they need something to go and cancel out this tp and no oh, it's not enough by the skin of his teeth that little coaster gets out yeah that was very very close but another time they tried to invade the enemy's jungle they tried to make a play onto this one he's way too tanky how do you take him down i think this game at the moment feels completely on morph and he needs to be the real damage dealer for his team. He has Manta, that's cool. The next item that he's going for is Lincoln's, and 
I understand how that helps versus Stormhammer, but besides mm. that, I, I'm not sure I agree with it completely. Um, cause You'd like to see it, more damage coming out yeah, from him. It, yeah. Even the Skadi or something like that would be pretty cool. This, mm -hmm. this Lincoln's, I mean, it's still good. It's a normal item that kind of fell out of favor for Morphlings quite a while ago. You don't really see it Radiant at all any longer, but uh, we'll see. If he stays alive long enough, and if he gets like six slotted, eventually he is the true win condition of the game. Mm -hmm. Just the problem is they have to survive long enough to be able to get him six slots to have all those items. Yep. And uh, they're playing pretty fast on the side of Quincy Creek. You know, it's, it's only 23 minutes and we've got only a 2k advantage, but they definitely hit those timings a lot faster on the side of Quincy. He's, he's on a pretty good road, like, as you just said, it's only 23 minutes in, and then we has Manta and Lincolns, plus Midas Power Threads, it's, it's quite a bit, like, he, he's super farmed in this Morphling. Oh, the BKB getting picked up now by Yuar, they're hunting, they want to find something here. Make their way top, do they realize it though? I can see Moose already got the relocate up, they're going to be able to just take him out immediately. Don't want to put him in any harm's way. Snake King, though, over here on the side, will break the smoke. You are just going to go and slice him up into ribbons here. It's going to be very difficult for Snake King to survive this. You can go for the cookie hop from SVG. But again, it's your support. You're not too concerned about this. Rolling Thunder from the mid lane, though. Quinn getting a little cheeky here with Eternal Envy. He's waiting for the rest of his team to show up that way for him, trying to pull away. Turns himself into his own Pangolier. MSS is here, though. Nature's Grasp gets you. There's going to be the Overgrowth. They hold Envy into place, followed up with those kisses coming in hot. Mu will go down, and just it's so hard to pin Envy down. But oh, they get a bash off, and down goes the Morphling. Also, did you see that Storm Bolt from UR? That stun yes. from Hammer? He didn't uh, go on Envy. He actually uh, casted it on creeps around him so that smart. the Lincolns isn't popped. Yes, very smart, very smart. Very smart. <laughs> and they're just walking right into the space. There's no Morphling for 40 something seconds. There's not much that they can really do. You can throw out the chakra, maybe clear out some of these creep ways, but just this is what we're talking about. They know that they come online faster. They need enough time for Envy to get big enough to have this damage, and they aren't having that ability right now. Quincy just playing too fast. I, the big problem that Furfan is facing right now is they have these two supports um, that don't deal damage at all. You have Wisp and Clock. These two heroes, like, Clockwork sometimes can fill that role if he's playing versus certain heroes, like some squishy position fives, but uh, in this game he just doesn't kill anyone. Wisp doesn't kill anyone for sure. And then you have Kunkka on mid. Like, they're in a... This draft looks just... The more you look at it, the more clearer it becomes how difficult this game is for them. They're just, they just don't waiting have the for envy. Yeah. They're just waiting for envy, that's it. I'm just too tanky over here. Radiant Quinn's gonna run into step. EE. There's a double damage rune available Radiant bottom, though, so they could potentially pick attack. that up, but it looks like they're not headed that area. They've just taken over the castle over here on the side of Quincy. And they're hunting for whatever they can find. They do have the smoke of deceit right now over here on uh, for fun. They're not finding anyone. Yeah, the uh, the Snapfire Ags is complete. We're going to be seeing some people getting yeeted into this uh, lineup here very soon, Lizard. Even more damage as well. Like, this mm -hmm. isn't only about the disabled, about the stun and obviously the yeet. It's about the damage. That damage is huge um, coming from Snapfire. Oh, it's broken, right? The fact that not only do you throw someone in, it stuns and it does damage. Like, and it's you just throw him so across strong. the map. Right? Yeah, that too. And the fact that you don't have to be on my screen and I'm scroll all the way out and you still are able to uh, yeet people over there. There it is. There's the jump forward here from you where they almost just, oh yeah, they blow yeah. up Eternal Envy. They fall off the boat. And just like that, moves down. Brax is down. Roy is trying to run away. You are. He's just not going to give you up. Never going to let you down. He's just coming for you here. Goes right back in. Down goes Ryoya. He's not even done. He says, yeah, I know there's buildings to hit, but there's a snaking alive here, and I would like to get this kill. Down he goes. It's a team wipe for the side of four fun. Yeah, there, there was a buyback on Envy that whole time, but he just decided not to use it. And 
I mean, yeah. if he uses it, this game is over, because he's never gonna catch up to Sven anymore. But it, it looks pretty damn rough this way, too. It's not looking good right now. I mean, like I said, you've got the buyback on Morphling, but he doesn't have the damage. Just moving too fast for the side of, uh, for fun to really keep up here. Take down that. They've already taken down mid. They do need to get the tier two if they want to grab the other bottom racks. Rush is up. I think right now they just move back into the rush pit, mm -hmm. take that out and um, continue pushing afterwards. He still does have that double damage rune on Morphling. He picked it up with a bottle that was given to him, but... Uh, they smoke right underneath those wards. Oh, no. Look at them. They're just begging them to come up this side. Well, they're thinking that um, Sven is still in the pit. They're thinking that he's still doing rush. That's why they're moving around like this. Uh, okay, this uh, is also... No, 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 no. What you doing here for fun? What you doing, Envy? Nessus, he's got the overgrowth. They've got everything they need here. They just <laughs> stand there and they look at them. They're just knocking the door. Hey, guys, what's up? They get the kill on Snake King. Now Envy, he's trying to just blow up Lelis. He can't do it fast enough. Look at this. Plus the Snapfire Kisses. Plus the Rolling Thunder. Just rolling on through. Whoa, beautiful wall vacuum combo. The good game gets called. Yeah, that's just game. They can't survive this. They can't do anything here. And like I said, Lizard, I have yet to see Quincy Crew get too owed. Yeah, um, good performance by them. Just a very solid draft, I think, in this last game. That was the most important part for me. Um, you remember, during the draft, I did call Kunka for, for fun, but it, it still wasn't the best pick. It still doesn't feel that great because they're with these heroes that they had, they needed some burst damage. They needed some damage, and Kunka really doesn't deliver that. Some specific games he does, but not in this one and not with this build. So um, they struggled. They were waiting for Envy, who had a perfect game in the laning stage. They waited for him to finally come online and do something. But uh, he was playing PvE, and when the time to PvP came, it didn't really work. Yeah, definitely uh, did not pan out for him. And it definitely felt, too, like you've got those two supports. You mentioned this during the draft, too. You know, having the IO and the clock who just don't dish out the damage, and then on top of that, throwing in the uh, the Kunkka. Just didn't work out for them. But, you know, they put up a good fight. They're one of the only teams, I believe, that have managed to take a victory off of Quincy Crew so far. So, you know, they're going to get another chance. They're going down to the lower mm -hmm. bracket. I mean, you know, the lower bracket is uh, where all the winners come from, especially, you know, you look at you look at EG, you know, they're, they're lower bracket champs. Someday we'll see that team come back to NA, hopefully. But uh, that is going to be it from us for the night, guys. So we are going to... Oh, before I forget... Don't forget, you can totally go and vote for the Monster MVP. BTS.gg slash Monster MVP. Vote for your favorite player. Definitely make sure you do that. But uh, like I said, that's it from Lizard and I tonight. So we're going to throw it to a break. And when we come back, we're going to have the boys over on the panel in their lovely tidy bunker uh, break it all down for you. So we'll see you. Take a break. <laughs> 